Well, hello, everybody. My pretties, my uglies, my in-betweens. It's Steph, it's Tani. From a Comedy Advice Podcast. The host, and I am prancing into your ears right now. Oh, so jolly am I. Just holding in my hand a silver platter. And on that silver platter, I am about to throw in your face the delicious contents of this episode. Mm -hmm. I hope you're able to take a finger and just wipe it across your forehead, that tasty cream on your face that I have thrown onto you is going to be the judges, the, the special guests of this episode, Christian, Josh, and Rick. And they are an incredible trio that have this podcast. It's relatively new. They blew up on TikTok. We talk a little bit about that and how they grew to fame. And also just their humble beginnings and their humble origins, their Midwestern roots. They're so nice. They're so witty. It's, mm, I don't know how else to describe them other than they're just like this wholesome artisan whole wheat bread. They, they can just make any sandwich tasty and any conversation worth a bite. You know, have you, have you ever just bitten into a conversation? You're like, mm, that's good. I'm staying here for a while. Yeah. That's how it was with them. And their podcast is awesome. So listen to the podcast, follow them, all that good stuff. And while you're at it, don't forget to follow me. Subscribe, leave a review. Come see me live next week. I'm going to be at the House of Comedy in Phoenix. And I also have a show in Chandler at Improv Mania, the 12th of November called Off the Top. It's going to be an improv battle. And I think I covered everything. So I'm going to let you guys get into the episode. Here we go. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Oh, hey, how are you guys doing? <laughs> Good, how are you? Hello. We're all going to be in one frame. Congratulations on the newish studio, by the way. Oh, oh thank, thank you very you. much. This is great. You guys look great. Thanks. Oh, thank you. You too. Loving the hair. <laughs> oh, thank you. I was going to say too, uh, Christian, did you get a haircut or is it just so neatly just pulled back? Man bun. Oh, yeah, I rock beautiful. the man bun sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I almost did it. I, you know, I've been trying to experiment and do like a little a samurai type thing i'm not gonna um, that's my favorite look that's my go-to <laughs> really i i feel like yeah. you could pull it off I, I love the samurai pony kind of bun going on okay okay and it, lo you, it looks like you've had long hair maybe longer than erica uh i'm not sure you look like <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's gotten quite long it's pretty long now I, yeah. I think i just got my hair cut like two weeks i think his is longer than mine now yeah, been going on a like year and a half almost, growing it out. Wow, good. I, oh, okay, because that's what I was going to ask. Did you have it long before, or you just grew it out? I grew it out during going, COVID. Okay, you grew it out when going to the barber was like prohibition. Okay, got it. <laughs> yeah, same. Very accurate. Same. Yeah, I used to have a tight. I had a little razor fade, and now I look like I'm recording a podcast in my mom's basement. So yeah. <laughs> It's great. Same. It's great. It's great. And Joshua, you're, since I'm commenting on everyone's hairs here, yours <laughs> look like shit. Really, I, I yeah, no, that makes there. sense. Yeah, I should, yeah, no. <laughs> let's go. Let's go to Erica. <laughs> Wonderful highlights, Erica. No, Thank just, you. <laughs> yeah, no. If we, could, if we could not bring up my hair at all, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> We've been talking behind his back. We all have the same hairstylist, so like that's true. It's so, either compliment all of us or unless our hairstylist hates me specifically, which is a possible. <laughs> that's possible. I don't know what you're saying to the stylist, Josh, but. Uh, do better. No, I'm yeah. kidding. Your head looks great. I, mean, I don't know why I keep shitting you on you, Joshua. <laughs> I, I am such a fan of people making fun of me. It's 100% all right. Which is good because oh, we always make fun of you. By the way, guys, we are recording, but I should give you all a right. little bit of a down low, a brief on what this podcast is, what it's about, and see if you guys have any questions. I'm not going to answer them, but just in case. <laughs> uh, That's fair. It feels good to get it out sometimes, but it's a comedy advice podcast where we're going to talk a little bit about y'all and then uh, we're going to give some advice based on some questions that either I have found or fans have sent me from the Reddit advice column amongst other other fun things. Am I supposed to be giving uh, good advice? You cut out where you said, am I supposed to be giving? And then I thought you said dad advice. Is that what you <laughs> well, asked? I can also give dad advice. I'm not a dad, but I can give that. Do I need to give good advice? Oh, good. No, 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 no. This is, it's sillier questions. So you can give silly advice, but 
there have been some people that have come on the show and they've made it real serious and somber. Mm. So you can do whatever you want. It's your episode. Okay. I'll do that. I'll bring down the mood. Yeah. You you guys keep it light. <laughs> I'll keep it heavy. You do your thing. Yeah. Ruin the show like normal. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, um, I think we can just jump back into the uh, the episode. Not that we ever jumped out. I guess we've been in this pool for a little while. I don't know if someone's peed. It's getting a little warm in here. Oh, God. Well, hello, everybody. It's a comedy advice podcast with your host, Stefan Satani. I don't even think I introduced myself to you guys. Stefan Satani is the name. The comedy advice podcast is the game. Hello. I'm not doing that. That was lame. No, well. Oh, man. <laughs> you do elbows? Is that, what, is that what you do, Eric? Yeah, we need COVID safe Zoom protocol here. Real Howie Mandel over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, th those wonderful voices, if I haven't introduced them or if uh, we have not said their names out loud, Joshua, Christian, and Ricky from the amazing podcast, The Judges. Snaps, yeah. snaps, yeah. snaps. Hooray. Was that a poor intro for you guys? I feel like no, I should have had a better... <laughs> the snaps are great. No, don't, don't lie to me. Okay. All I'm, right. I'm pretty upset with it. But Clearly, I would tell you the truth, and I thought that was fine. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that is very, very true. And I'm I'm super I'm honored to have you guys because I have just been delighted listening to your podcast, giggling, chuckling, chortling, guffawing even, um, with the amazing episodes that you guys have been bringing. And I found you guys in the digital world of TikTok, just mm -hmm. scrolling through. I'm not a huge TikToker, but I was like, how do podcasts do it here? So I found you guys clips were they just hooked me in i was like a little comedy fishy and you guys had the bait <laughs> and i went to the link and I, I watch you guys on youtube and you guys are absolutely hilarious so first off congrats thank you, thank you. Snap, snap, we're honored to be here snap 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 of, we, we unsurprisingly a vast i don't know if a majority but a lot of people find us through tiktok a lot of our reviews are hey found you through tiktok which is great that's what we plan on yeah, being the goal um, yeah. but hopefully, yeah, um, we use the TikToks. Obviously, they're cut down versions of our show. Right. We try to inject as much of us into it as we can given the time constraint. And then hope when people come, they stick around. So mm -hmm. yeah. We that hope the TikTok cool. hooks you in, then the stupid idiot uh banter yeah. really keeps you in. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yes, that dumb dumb banter. It's just a delicious entree. The TikTok is like a little uh little I was gonna say Asiago, that's not the word. Escargo. Is that an appetizer? Mm. I'm not sure. Yeah. That's <laughs> We're from the Midwest, so we'll say yes. <laughs> That's way too fancy of a word for people from small town Illinois. <laughs> so so did you guys expect that TikTok was going to be the gold mine? It was going to be that rich vein to get you guys lots of views? No. No. Absolutely not. It was sort of one of those things where uh, we just did it because it actually the first clip we uploaded was a song that my girlfriend and I wrote as a cover of uh london bridge by fergie in the sea shanty style mm -hmm. and that went that we our first video one hundred twenty five thousand views and then we we're like well we got to keep uploading here um and then yeah wow. they started popping off just uh sort of became yeah really really unsuspected but glad it happened obviously it's yeah. converted to a lot of really good we have a really good relationship with our fans yeah i think so they they go on they rib us they make fun of me all the time uh they tell erica she's beautiful and christian's a himbo so yeah our fans don't lie. That is very true. I would have imagined, by the way, with that music video going viral, Joshua, that you and your girlfriend would have gone on tour and just been famous musicians. But yeah, um, we're working on it. We're doing a spinoff. I'm actually breaking off of the judges mm -hmm. and we're going straight into the grungies. So we just started to do grunge metal in our in our in our basement. I'm going to boot that one. Thank you. You can actually end the podcast now if you'd like. That's... I think. And thank you so much. That's all the time I've got. So thank you, guys. <laughs> That's that great. I think you might jokes. have to, you might have to work on the hair a little bit, Joshua. I yeah, think that's yeah. the only thing that's holding <laughs> mm -hmm. you back right now. You look like Weezer just gave up. I think <laughs> very that's, accurate. I've been working on that for so long. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh man! And I was going to ask too, but I just forgot what the question was because I was just so enchanted with Joshua's hair. 
that. <laughs> oh, uh, th- this is where, uh, yeah, the the interaction with fans too. I feel like you have a great relationship with your fans. I know that at the start of the episode, you guys read some reviews that people have sent in through Apple Podcasts. A lot of them, like you said, that I've seen and you guys have read have been like, oh, I found you guys on TikTok. You guys are great. Make fun of Joshua a little bit. Tell uh, Erica how amazing she is. I think <laughs> Christian's like uh, in between. It- a little bit it's like sometimes. a 50 50 either people really make fun of me for not being able to read or they tell me i'm a big beautiful boy basically mm-hmm. <laughs> both are true both are true and it's been it's been so cool to see how the epi- episodes have have developed too because i was listening to the first couple of episodes mm-hmm. it just started off with the um judging the am i the asshole section of reddit where some you pulled some pearls from there i think the first one ever was about how somebody um brought a dairy dish to Mm -hmm. a neighborhood Uh. party and put it on the vegan bench or table and then somebody (laughs) tried to take it off they ended up getting very frustrated because the person tried to put it back on they threw it in the garbage (laughs) and Mm -hmm. the question is classic right there Mm-hmm. That was Erica's oh. story. Was it? Yep. Mm-hmm. And if you might, it was that was peak. That was like peak COVID lockdowns too. Mm. And the and the post had to be all like, we were COVID safe, and it's like, all right, you don't have to. Lie. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't think I've ever no. been to a potluck that's been COVID safe. So. <laughs> that, yeah, that's true. I was I was thinking about that as I was thinking about many things in quarantine, just scratching the days that I've been inside mm-hmm. on the wall, and one of them was potlucks are probably out and buffets Mm -hmm. are probably Mm -hmm. out um i don't know do you guys have do you guys still have buffets have you guys been out in the wild since you have you been back a little bit we haven't really done too many buffets that's fine (laughs) i do love a buffet but they are uh quickly dwindling in this area so Mm -hmm. if you get lucky maybe you can find a pizza hut with a lunchtime buffet (laughs) in the area it's kind of a striking gold there oh man that's about the best you can get in this area though i'm pretty anti-buffet myself in general but really that's fine yeah i just a lot it's just cold food most of the uh, sub hot food we won't say cold sub hot normally this it's like you go to a buffet but you get the same three things every time what's the point just give me the menu i feel like that's a really cold take not that's how i am i don't like it (laughs) <laughs> i think buffets are fine there's a lot of opportunity for people to sneeze and touch and contaminate my food but like it's pretty good the danger so. kind of makes it better though right yeah, <laughs> the danger makes it more oh. exciting it's that risk that's why i like investing in dogecoin it's like i might lose <laughs> all my money but i could make it big so yeah the, bu- the buffet of investments would... dogecoin yeah the buffet <laughs> yeah exactly amazing and the um i I just listened to episode 69 by the way Mm -hmm. which i thought man are they gonna are they gonna yeah nice are they gonna go over the top with the 69 thing and of course you didn't it was very classy very well done (laughs) i think it it ended at 69 minutes which was a nice touch you guys had a uh kind of jeopardy round Mm -hmm. with 69 trivia which was great and some 69 uh questions or am i the assholes like paying someone back with 69 dollars and 69 cents hilarious prank it's yeah we try not to we try not to go right over home plate with some stuff but yeah christian really knocked out of the park with the editing there getting it to 69 minutes we actually we don't cut a ton from our episodes we always joke that we're cutting a ton but Christian did a really good job getting it down to, to 69 minutes there. Yeah, it was a challenge. Uh, Josh wouldn't shut the fuck up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I did it. Oh. I was scolded oh, in the man. comments, though, because I didn't do 69.42 and mm-hmm. zero frames, which I, I didn't even think about. I was worried about 69. <laughs> Christian's always worried about 69, I did. to be fair. Oh, my God. I that is a good point. Yeah, I did see those comments and leave those comments as well. So I was very <laughs> upset about that. Bitch. But uh, it's all right. It's uh, only a one in a lifetime opportunity. It's only mm-hmm. uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't think there are any any celebratory episodes after that besides hundred. Right. Well, I guess you can. Yeah, that's not, not sexual. Not many. Okay. Well, 
You ruined it. Moving on. Yeah. So um, yeah. <laughs> we've peaked. That's that's been decided. <laughs> yeah. The last episode, episode sixty nine. God, I think I'm on two eighty nine. Wow. wow. Not to brag, but when when I first started, <laughs> I was bald, and uh, no, um, <laughs> I have not done the type of editing that you've done for the sixty nine episode. So hats. Hats off, wigs off, whatever it will be. Top head pieces to you for the the beautiful well, orchestration you. and editing of that video. Just you, Christian, just so I'm mm -hmm. being clear. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, I have nothing to do with any of our editing um, or any really creative of parts of our episodes. So that's that's all all them. But that's what's so great about you, Erica, is I feel like you just <laughs> go in, you tell it like it is, and then you yeah. leave. And yeah. I... I <laughs> I feel like uh, I I actually, fun fact, I started this podcast with my two brothers. And uh, mm. I no longer they did. Didn't they didn't last. <laughs> yeah, they just didn't last. They couldn't, they couldn't, they didn't make the cut. They made the haircut, but they didn't make the podcast <laughs> cut. So um, you guys have such a good chemistry, though. Better than me and my brothers, to be honest with you. That's why you guys are sticking around for so long. But um, I feel like the chemistry is there. And do, so I know that Christian... Erica, you guys are married. Joshua, mm -hmm. yes. side piece. How yes. did the Christian side how, piece, not mine? <laughs> yeah, yes, that's right. I, I should have yeah. specified there. How did the friendship slash relationship begin? If you don't mind me asking, you guys want to go first with yours? Um, so Christian and I were on the same soccer team when we were five. Very cute. Aww. And then, Aww. um. <laughs> And then through like middle school, we hated each other. He was really rude. Um, <laughs> and then somewhere between like freshman year, my freshman year of high school and sophomore year of high school, um, we went to our town um, festival, our summer like carnival and held hands for the first time. And uh, he got my phone number from a friend off of like Facebook messenger or something. And it was probably my space at the time, to be honest. It might've been my space mm. at the time because we're <sighs> fucking old, but, um, but yeah, it just kind of blossomed from there. High school sweethearts. Yeah. I, think I mean, Eric was we... kind of a piece of shit, <laughs> <laughs> but now she's great. <laughs> Christian fixed her. It's been 12 years, but Please. he finally fixed her. <laughs> Whatever. That is so inspirational and such a, a classic Midwest small town, Illinois story. Mm -hmm. Oh just, yeah, very much so. Beautiful. God, I'm from Arizona, so we meet, you know, battling scorpions and surviving <laughs> in the desert and shit. I met my wife at an oasis, so it was yeah, great. Not the concert, yeah. but <laughs> beautiful. How, how I was gonna? Well, I don't know. Can I ask? Because uh, I think we might be the same age. I think you guys might be a little younger than me because you look way younger than me. But uh, you mentioned I'm 28. Yeah, and we're 27. We're 27. Eric and I. Oh, shit. I'm 46. So, yeah, this Ooh. is way off. I don't There's know no way you're 46. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm 33. I'm 33 for okay. reals. But, oh, okay. God, you're, yeah. but we're like, we're a Midwest 27. So, that's like, that's like an LA, like 90. Like, we're, we're world. carcasses. Yeah, world. No, you know, when I first, when I first saw you, <laughs> carcasses, the vultures are circling. No, you guys look mm -hmm. really young. Like, I thought you guys were right out of high school when I first saw mm -hmm. episode one. I don't know if that's what <laughs> it was published. I will take that compliment. But... 27 is kind of hitting me hard. So, I'll take that compliment. <laughs> yes, thank you. You you look just as youthful as as a, you're beaming with youth and uh, thank and good you, lives, Erica. <laughs> Remember that Joshua, not so later. much. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah, Josh. I'm the I'm the carcass. I I bring the vultures and then they go they move over to you guys and say no, they're they're much too youthful. They're much too spry. <laughs> yeah, Josh has never with heard the... of this thing called moisturizer, so it's pretty rough. <laughs> With the with the mustache, Joshua kind of looks like the chaperone of you two, making sure you guys don't. Get <laughs> that makes any... sense. Yeah, yeah. That's actually that is how we met. As I was the chaperone at the dance, they held up hands at, and I said, "Hey, hey, back it up, back it up. A little bit of room here. Room for Jesus, please." Joshua, I don't even well, remember how we met. I think we just went to school together. Yeah, we went to we went to middle school. The first the the first interaction, Eric, that I have uh, that's a memory of Erica and I is she sat behind me in study hall in sixth I don't grade. Remember that. Um, but other than that, nothing. And then you went to a different school mm -hmm. after that. 
And then Christian and I had a mutual friend and then that mutual friend just didn't show up to a hangout and Christian did. And then yeah. we just sort of, that's when we were what, 19 and 20. Yeah. And Realized, we just sort of yeah. been we're, friends since. We're a stronger pair together than with that third friend. So we kind yeah. of kicked him out. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. Just like with me and my younger brother, we took the middle brother and we're like done, done with you. So I, I will know, say I was just- we do constantly joke that I'm, christian's boyfriend we are just friends i don't want to like uh, <laughs> make it seem like we're trying to like bait people into thinking that we're more lgbtq plus friendly than we are of course we were very friendly but um i we do get a lot of comments that really like oh so like explain how that works like did you know christian wanted a boyfriend the whole time and it's like no guys we're we're just good friends i'd support him if he did but i, just, I don't right. think he wants we're hetero life partners and that's it someone just commented we're like an all-white turk and jd from scrubs and i think that pretty much fits Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is the exact pair that i had thought as well so that's fantastic the um now (laughs) who i i think that that christian is turk and uh joshua is jd i I guess that Mm. makes sense because turk had oh my god i'm forgetting the cast members carla thank you Mm -hmm. thank you Mm -hmm. I can't do this all on my own, you know. I'm a Superman. <laughs> we got you. Nice. <laughs> oh shit! I've just got that joke. All right, you get a boo from me. <laughs> I was gonna. I was anticipating a boo, so I just mm-hmm. I felt it to my core. That's great. Well, you guys are just a lovely bunch, and I'm so happy to have you on the pod. We're going to get into some advice and answer some questions, but before we do, I like to get nice and inspired with nothing other than an inspirational quote. So mm, I like to ask perfect. my guests. I've got mm. I've got one right here, but the but I like to ask my guests. Do you guys have any inspirational quotes that help you when you're feeling down, feeling judged, or maybe just you know you wake up and you look in the mirror and you're like, my hair looks awful, even though I have the same <laughs> stylist as my two friends, and uh, <laughs> you're just looking for an inspirational quote. Do you, do you guys do you guys have any? Yeah, I I do. Um... My mom always said, uh, it could be worse. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's all I got. <laughs> could be worse. That is what I say in the mirror every time that I... Yep. Could be worse. <laughs> I, I'm about to take the scissors and I say, you know what, Josh, you got to be grateful for what you got. Mm-hmm. As oh, Erica's gosh. mom says. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. I think that was a Gandhi quote too. I think I heard him say that oh. once or twice. <laughs> yeah. That's very wise. So, Your mom should really start crediting where she's getting her quotes from. I'll let her know. <laughs> That's a wonderful quote, Erica. Thank you for sharing that. C- Thanks, Christian, yeah. do you do you um, have a I'm quote? I'm trying to I'm trying to think. Um I don't know. Maybe Josh, do you got one well, on your head real quick? And yeah, while you're I thinking, do. I just w- wanted to say I'm so sorry if sometimes I'm speaking over you guys. You guys are phenomenal podcast etiquette folks, by the way, with the pausing and everything. If I do speak over you, it's because I'm already bored with what you have to say. So mm. we're yeah, just going to move that's on. That's about right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Glad. Yeah. Chris- glad Christian does that to me and Erica a ton. So that makes sense. I'm constantly getting talked over. I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I'm glad we're all on the same page. Joshua, mm-hmm. uh, I'm so sorry. You were going to say? Yeah. Um, I'm going to pull this. Uh, this is a quote that I pulled. I, I, it is, I don't know who it's attributed to, but my psychology teacher, my senior in high school, said it. The world is 10% what happens and 90% of how you perceive it. I really like that quote. I think it really helps me reset my vision every day if I ever feel oh. down. What a nerd. Yeah. I actually used that in my valedictorian speech, so call me a nerd again. You see him drop <laughs> this shit on us? <laughs> Listen, I was salutatorian, okay? You're not that special. You're only slightly more special than only me. Only more special than me. <laughs> how many, I'm sorry, how many people were in your class, Joshua? Was it like the rest of Weezer and that was it? Or what was Yeah, it was Rivers and then, uh, yeah, and that's it. Um, I, my class was 150. Erica, you want to pray tell? <laughs> <laughs> I had I had fifteen. <laughs> yeah, we are very small town people here. We're we are very big fish, small pond. But mm-hmm. that's that's wonderful. The um, <clears throat> if Christian, you're ready to drop a a really juicy quote on us. Feel free. What did Google if find not, for you? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I had to do a quick Google search because I'm kind of a pessimist, so I don't uh, kind of talk myself up most days. So. Uh, the first search on Google has to say, uh, when you have a dream, 
you got to grab it and never let go. So thanks, Carol Burnett. Who's Carol Burnett? I don't know. The first person on Google's <laughs> inspirational quote list. There you oh, go. dang. Does, Carol does that sound Burnett. good to you, though? That sounds like pretty good advice to me. That sounds, yeah. I mean, when you have a dream, you got to grab it and never let go. It sounds, mm -hmm. uh, you got to make sure the dream has consent first, I would say. Sure. It sounds like true. you're really yeah. just getting really <laughs> aggressive on that dream. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, ultimately, that was a horrible quote. If you want to try again. No, I'm kidding. That was oh, good. That was no, Christian. We can, that was go, good. we can go to number two. That's fine. Um, you only get one shot. No, no. We, we've really only got room for one. So out of the hundred, you picked the worst. No, I'm kidding. It was great. It was fantastic. The question I was going to ask you guys, by the mm. way, that I had forgotten because I'm extremely old, is are you? Do you guys also do stand up comedy or other forms of comedy? No, no, we we have no formal comedy training. We're just three idiots from Midwest Illinois. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what we do. <clears throat> fans, fans of stand up. Yes, mm. very big fans of stand up. Got my got my Brody Steven shirt on. I had to represent stand up. I knew you're a fan of stand up. Oh. Did stand up, I believe. Well, yeah, yes, I'm a huge fan of stand up. Most of my guests are stand up comedians. And mm -hmm. I will say from from humble old me, I would say that you guys probably should do stand up because you've got, <laughs> as my mom would say, the gift. Uh, <laughs> she wasn't she wasn't italian oh she, she irish just, oh okay <laughs> yeah yeah Did say irish she jamaican yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> so um but yeah you guys do have a gift and i feel like you guys have these really good quips and are very quick on your feet so if not stand up improv but something out there you guys should should or live podcasts even too i mean you guys we actually definitely... yeah uh i would love to have the opportunity to do that unfortunately i don't think our brand of comedy would kill super great at the bowling alley mm -hmm. in small town. <laughs> I don't think the uh, 50 year old white men aren't going to like us talking about shits and farts. But yeah, probably not. The comedy club slash bowling alley in our town. <laughs> so you, you would be surprised how many 50 year old men are on TikTok, myself included. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. I feel like, and I'm at the bowling alley every Thursday with my bros. So <laughs> I, I would be delighted if I saw if I saw you guys doing a live podcast, but are there, so there are no venues or any places to do stand up. No, we're about the bowling alley. two hours South of Chicago. And okay. I mean, what's the next biggest one? Peoria. Yeah. Which I doubt that there's even a comedy club in Peoria. There's a comedy club in Peoria. Oh, is there? But... Okay. Well, we're still about an hour and a half North of Peoria. We're kind of sandwiched between Chicago and Peoria, Illinois. So I, I actually just said this on last, on the episode that we just recorded this week, but it really is like we live in the middle of cornfields and that's not a euphemism to where when I go to Wisconsin, I'm like, wow, those hills look amazing. Mm -hmm. Like when I went to Colorado, my mind was blown. I went to out of state first time when I, as an adult, when I was 25 and I was like, there's a whole world. That's insane. Mm -hmm. It's not just cornfields and bean fields out there. Oh my gosh. To live. So I lived in a small bubble or a small town. It was called Cottonwood, Arizona. And we had a small stretch of farm because my grandparents, they immigrated from Jamaica and they started mm -hmm. a, right. a um, dairy farm. And so we still have it. And so I remember I would, I grew up on the farm and then I moved to New Jersey and worked in New mm. York city. And it was a terrifying at first, it was very bewildering because I I was so happy, and then I would smile and wave at people as they were walking mm -hmm. by, yeah. and they were like, "No, don't, mm -hmm. don't do that." Mm -hmm. So they, in, they'd walk pickpocketed, <laughs> yeah, <Way Yeah>. in. <laughs> Have a great day. <laughs> Hope that's enough for you. <laughs> Pretty much, I'd wave and then just throw my dollars in them, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's how it worked, but um. But yeah, now I'm back in Phoenix and uh, it's, but it's, it's Cottonwood, Arizona is so different, but it's still, there's city ish stuff around there. Like there are restaurants, we had a Denny's, which was open 24 hours, mm. which was kind of cool. So, and uh, the place that we hung out at as, as teenagers was Sonic. So okay. um, that was the place. Yeah. <clears throat> I felt yeah, like such a baller. Oh, you know, okay. Okay. Is there a place where the kids I mean, would hang out in? Yeah, there was a pizza joint that we, actually we just had that for dinner tonight. Um, the kids nice. always hung out at the the local pizza joint, and it was nice. delicious. 
we always got in nice. trouble there. Did it, it does the pizza joint does it have like a an, an Italian name or is it like some Midwest like oh Hallahan's or something? <laughs> um, I guess it's an Italian name, Marshalonis. Yeah, I guess they have the big Italian pizza box that every pizza place here has. Yeah. Or nice. There's some soon I assume Casey's General Stores will have Italian pizza boxes pretty soon because any pizza place that opens <laughs> has to pretend like they're Italian. Mm-hmm. Was the name you said the name was Marshalonis? Yeah, yeah, or Marshies for short. Yeah, Marshies. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. It almost sounds like the guy's name is John Marshall, and then he's like, "How can I Italianize this?" <laughs> Marshalonis. I mean, could it be? It is. It's just a small chain. Like there's several of them so in like them. Central Illinois, but that's pretty good. Nice. <laughs> that that is pretty good. I also I I do know that uh, I'm talking shit but i'm from arizona where we don't have any good food whatsoever like we've got cactus kangaroo rats and scorpions you can't really do much you mm-hmm. can't you can't put a stir fry together with that so um having pizza you could. I think it might not be very good <laughs> it, it's not i've tried yeah it's, <laughs> it's not great but i've heard the pizza is especially good in illinois chicago area i know you guys are known for the Deep dish. The deep dish. I don't know. Mm-hmm. How, I don't. How deep is it? I'm not sure. Uh, how deep is like about that? They get pretty thick. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. Nice. It's, it's mostly great. sauce and cheese, which is not my favorite. Yeah, I think I might be the only one out of us that really enjoy the deep dish pizza. I'm not a fan. I uh, yeah, I'm a fan of the actual true Chicago pizza, which I believe is called like a tavern style pizza. Yeah. And it's really thin and like really crispy, like cracker almost. It's kind of oh. dog shit, but it's like <laughs> takes me back to my childhood. It's awful. I'm oh, judging you. Though those are how the like the authentic Italian pizzas are. The mm. I, I learned this a couple years ago. I li- not a lot of my fans know this about me. I speak Italian and Brazilian Portuguese. I lived in Italy. Oh wow. For a little while. Mamma mia. And so <laughs> I w- the pizzas there, you get a whole pie to yourself. And it's very thin. And it it actually they say the 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 uh, sooner it is ready from the oven, the better. Because the, the the like Napolitan way is to put it in the oven at 950 degrees for 90 seconds, and then just wow, pull her out of there. Sounds yeah. delicious. Yeah, yeah. No, it tastes like garbage, but I mean, it's tradition. <laughs> so right. no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It was. It was. It was exquisite. It was very good. But anyway, <clears throat> not to get us all hungry, but um, mm. go. You guys. You guys fed me some delicious inspirational quotes, so I'll go ahead and share nice. mine if that's okay. Yeah, cool. so you're also yeah. very hungry for quotes. Okay, let me uh, wet your whistle with this juicy quote. This one is not by any person whatsoever. It's actually by a robot. Okay. And its name is Inspirobot. So its main function in life is to use AI to take some of the wisest words known to man Woo Man, um, Carol Baskin, or whoever you, Christian, <laughs> got the quote from. Carol. I believe it was Carol Baskin. <laughs> <laughs> and, <Is> that bitch. <laughs> and it just, it, it mashes them together for a beautiful, inspirational quote. Thoughts, feelings? I I'm waiting. here. Yeah, it's, it's I'm gonna, ready to live, laugh, love. So on the edge of my seat. Oh. <laughs> All right, live, laugh, love, we shall. So I'll read this. You guys can tell me what it means to you and, you know, give a a review for what you feel Inspirobot deserves. So this week, Inspirobot says, love affairs begin where other people's bodies end. And that's that's it. That's the whole quote. I feel like Inspirobot might have a foot fetish. I feel like that is where else does a body end other than someone's foot? Top of your head? No. Fingers? They're <laughs> just a phalange freak. Your words? No, that one's definitely in your body. It's definitely a oh. hand and foot thing. Hmm. It, it, it could be a hand. I liked I liked uh, Erica's the words. Thank you. It's, it's that's where uh, it's like very poetic in a sense. I know. I mean, it's inspirational. Some might say. <laughs> some. <laughs> Maybe inspired by it. Inspired by it. <laughs> kind of sound like he's a fan of adultery to me. But yeah. I don't know. That's just me. I was thinking the same thing. It's like where my wife's body ends is 
the mistress's body. And so that's yeah. where the love affair begins. Mm-hmm. Not so that where, I have a mistress. Where, Christian's, where my body ends, that's where Josh's starts. Yes. Mm. I think this was carefully plucked yeah. from Inspire Bot. It knew who was <laughs> yeah. coming on the pod. He knew his audience. It was like, it was, mm-hmm. oh man. Well, now, guys, did I don't want to, I don't know if you potentially have this as a sponsor, but I, I maybe Inspire Bot got a lot of its stuff from like Ashley Madison or something like that. Like, <laughs> really, really working that that f that affair angle because they have to convince these sad, sad people to cheat on their spouses. Mm-hmm. You need some good philosophy, some Plato, some Socrates, mm-hmm. some inspired oh. robot. Yeah, yeah, it's That's it's a great Plato. Minds. Plato taught was learned from Socrates, and then inspired robot learned from Plato. That okay. is yes. Hey, you're valid, Victoria. What... You probably know that. <laughs> I just also want to go back to Joshua's quote of what I actually forgot what it was, but I think the gist of it was life is 10% facts and then 90% your perception. And we just, we came at it with a little slice of the pie, going back to the pizza again, of this is what Erica thought. This is what Joshua thought. This is what Christian thought. This is what little old Steph thought. And we just put together this full... Like it was kind of like the scorpion cactus and kangaroo rat pizza, but it was mm-hmm. like a pizza of all these interesting flavors. Yeah, as long as I'm this kangaroo cat, I love kangaroo rat. rat. I'm a big fan of that metaphor. I, I think that's what you would be, Joshua. You might be the cactus. I'm not sure. Well, hang on. <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm the cactus in that I'm the aloe vera that soothes us all. Oh, it's not even a cactus. Okay, I'm the agave that makes us forget about everything bad that happened. Okay. I'm right. sorry. You're getting he's so embarrassing. <laughs> he's no, he's I, I, he's enchanting me a little bit with these desert metaphors. So I'm feeling mm-hmm. like, um, yeah, uh, a grain so of sand. Have that next effect. To his grain. I'm sorry. I, I sort of I make people lightheaded and like not aware of their surroundings fully. It's sort of like it's. Kind of that peyote makes me want to throw up and see God. So, <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel like I need to throw up and I need water and I'm dehydrated yeah, all same, at the same time. Same, honestly. I'm hallucinating a little bit, and so yeah, this is a wonderful time so far. I'm glad this is recorded. Beautiful. All right, now that we're nice and inspired, I feel like we can mm. kind of go on, it, in, continue our desert journey to the advice and the questions from Reddit. So we've got this first one. And it says, <clears throat> side hustle advice? I have been following a lot of side hustle profiles on Instagram, and they all emphasize the same thing. Invest in assets that appreciate instead of depreciate. They Did I pronounce that wrong? Depreciate? No, no, you're good. Oh, thank God. Okay. Appreciate, uh, depreciate? Uh, What'd you say? I said appreciate and depreciate. I, I thought that was just well, your jersey coming out of you. <laughs> I, no, it's it's just my my dumb dumb coming out. It's appreciate. Is that? I feel like you have to emphasize deeper. I feel like I'm okay. I'm gonna move on. They I think we say it like Chicago estate. people, so you really have a hard A and appreciate. Appreciate. Oh, so I was messing up on the appreciate. Well, and depreciate, right? <laughs> I don't think you should take any kind of reading advice from <laughs> these two. So, well, I'm not reading. I'm talking. I can. I'll also do bad. that. <laughs> the verbal. How would you say, Christian, how would you say appreciate and depreciate? Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would say appreciate and depreciate. But like okay. I said, I think we're in Chicago, so we do a real hard like. Uh, Chicago. I'm hearing the difference between depreciate and depreciate, but I feel like we're saying the same thing with appreciate. Do I have to say mm-hmm. it like uh, appreciate? Yeah. yeah, please say it like a Chicagoan. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, okay. <clears throat> they strongly suggest real estate. My question is, if I were to be deeply honest with myself, I don't see myself in that kind of field, like real estate, stocks, forex, crypto, and more so into handicrafts. I enjoy crochet, and after many years, I think this is my true passion. Any advice on how to make this passion of mine into an asset? I know business is one thing, but I would like to know more options. What else could crocheting be other than... Wait, what else could it be other than real estate, stocks, forex, crypto that could make money work for you is the question. 
Mm. And that's that's all. I I hope you guys depreciated that. So <laughs> that was yeah. We definitely appreciate the question. Uh, I don't think you can make yarn into a money maker. Sure, you can. No, into a like passive income. Yeah. Start How? an Etsy store. That's not passive. That's ship. entirely active. Yeah, that is entirely active. <laughs> I, well, it if is you a do side drop hustle. shipping. Yeah. There yeah. you go. You could you just you paying. could drop ship it. So you just get paying poor, <laughs> poor third world country people. To do your... I love crocheting, but I love paying a third world country to make it for me. I, I'll, I'll sort of scour Facebook marketplace and underpay somebody's grandma for nice homemade crafts and then upsell it to people in the suburbs. That Somehow don't... turn it into a multi-level. Marketing. Yeah. 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 Oh, if I have to be honest, I don't think there's any future in crocheting. I think you have to go to cross stitch. So yeah. Just name the next cryptocurrency crochet. Crochet coin. Mm. You're oh, good to crochet go. coin. Oh, Make man. it an NFT. Yeah. There you go. You could you could cross stitch NFTs onto. It's different. That's a different uh, hobby there. Cross stitch and crochet not the same. Yeah, one's cool and one's fucking lame. I, um, I did I did forget to um, elaborate. I like to diversify my portfolio by oh, having cross stitching and crocheting. Whatever. Nice way to thread that needle there. That's uh, nice. a boo. real You're crochet. You, we can tell. <laughs> oh, boo. <laughs> we can tell you have 200 and almost 70 episodes because you're an expert at this. <laughs> the way you weave back in. I think this guy's insane. more judgy. <laughs> I feel like things are good. At, yeah, it's it's. I feel a connection here. Not not mm-hmm. not quite uh, 50 crow shades of gray, but, you know, more like. Mm. Uh, God damn it. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> we're, I almost we're hit weaving. the soundboard we're, for that one. We're dodging and weaving. Oh man, see, I'm very envious of your guys' soundboard. I think that's my next investment is getting a soundboard. It's um, it's wonderful. Anyway, if you get a soundboard, um, get somebody that has Uncle Ben type influence on you to let you know that it does come with a great amount of responsibility. I've already had to take it away from Christian. Yeah, I got one episode with it, and it's, <laughs> I've already been grounded. It took me, I really was hanging on every word there, by the way, Joshua, when you said Uncle Ben, until I heard responsibility, I was not making the connection. And I thought it was like a Illinois like a rice or dish. Something. Oh, like, I yeah, I did kind of think that too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, is that all we have to crochet about this? Or is mm-hmm. this? Okay. I mean, look, I'm, I'm, I'm entirely pro- foregoing becoming a landlord to make yarn but that's not gonna be passive that's all i gotta say yeah there's probably a lot of hours this person this person got advice and then just said no (laughs) because they're a different advice that seems crazy (laughs) (laughs) i mean yeah i feel like they've given it all they got they've done the whole nine yarns and Mm -hmm. uh, i think it's Mm. time to (laughs) Boo. just get get into crypto i liked i liked ricky's advice just Thank go you. into do like cr- what is it crochet coin mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there you go i like that mm-hmm. crochet podcast maybe it's not po- we passive go. though right that's the it's thing not passive, you, no. yeah you'll never become passive with an active hobby that's like yeah i want to passively complete a 5k this year that makes but... no sense by sponsoring runners <laughs> I'm thinking I'm yeah I, that's what I was thinking too is like it's difficult to have any sort of passive income in any capacity like with real estate you have to go out you have to get the money to buy a house and either flip it or renovate it and then rent it out to people that want to live there so mm-hmm. I and then you have to manage it and you have to be able to you know Make sure that they're happy. If you have to get new tenants, screen those tenants. If something breaks, fix it. So I feel like ultimately crocheting might be less work than real estate. Probably. Well, you're Sounds like it. You're describing a good landlord. That's true. If your landlord <laughs> like Christian was to me, where I don't know, I lived there for nine months upstairs without a handrail on carpeted steps and the week I move out, he puts up a handrail. You could just be that kind of landlord. We're all adults. We That's shouldn't entirely need a passive. handrail. That was entirely passive aggressive in a way. So there's your passive aggressive oh. income. Man, that sounds like it was it was kind of 
insinuating get out of my house, Joshua. Yeah, the no hand. <laughs> it was heavily implied. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I can't think of another pun for a good ending, so we'll transition on to the next question. Actually, well, let's put a needle um, in it. A... And if we come up with another one, we'll come back to it. Well done. Well done. Mm -mm. You you <laughs> thread it. You. Th oh goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm uh, I'm ashamed of myself. So uh, you shouldn't be. All right, you should be. We're we're gonna go to the last question. This last question it says, boyfriend talking to his female friends about Halloween ideas for our kid and not me. I've tried. I've tired multiple times to start the conversation about dressing our kid for Halloween, and he wasn't interested at all. And today, while he was at work, he was talking the whole time with his female friends about what they wanted him to dress our kid as and what he wants, even though he completely ignored my ideas. Am I in the wrong for being upset? No. That dude sucks. Feelings, oh, oh. Feelings are always okay. valid. But uh, yeah, what's up with this guy? Yeah, it's well, awful. No, I, there's details left out. This is from the wife's side. The thing is... I knew you would come up with this. The thing is, she kept saying like, oh, he loves Aladdin. Let's do Aladdin with brown face included. And the husband's like, I'm not comfortable with it. <laughs> yeah, the wife... Yeah, the devil in the details is that the wife is extremely racist. Oh, well, that's... It's his favorite Disney movie. Check the, check the user's post history. I'm sure it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right. The female coworkers are just like, you don't have to do brown face. Maybe <laughs> you could do uh, Prince Eric. I'm sure he's not an offensive character. John Smith from Pocahontas. Yeah, John Smith's a real safe one. He's just a colonizer, <laughs> but that's fine. <laughs> yeah. that's the. Not to mention that Pocahontas was like 12 when they met. Not in Disney. Not in Disney, come on. Mm, right, she was just 16 in Disney. Yeah, he was okay. probably, I don't know, she 24. He was actually in his thirties. <laughs> mm -hmm. Some some little history Wait. facts for you. John Smith was a piece of shit. Tell me Disney lied. Yes. Man. That is. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Thought they're the one I ethical believe. company left. Oh my gosh! But but yeah, I guess John Smith. You said John Smith. You said Prince Eric. I don't think are there that many white ones anymore. I have no idea. The Prince guy Philip. from Up. The guy from Up. Earl. <laughs> <laughs> his name is Earl. <laughs> <laughs> the old man from actually how, how cute would that be if you That's saw very little kid cute. dressed It'd up adorable. as the guy from up i mean little kids are already kind of like wrinkly and glasses <laughs> on little kids is just so cute tie some balloons around yeah, them, put the them balloons. in some suspenders and give them a cane you get to bring your dog around it's great oh man that is pretty stupendous I think we just maybe we should just respond. I'll respond with the idea. And maybe there you go. Yeah, yeah, good call. We don't really care if you got mad or not. We don't know the details, <laughs> but we've got some suggestions for you. I do enjoy. Uh, I do enjoy a, a good question where it's like, man, there's a real big communication issue between me and my partner. Internet, can you solve it instead of me talking to my partner <laughs> about it? Like Erica's catchphrase I, is, of course, communication. And it, communication. it really does boil down to most of the internet's problems. Mm -hmm. Just talk to yes. your partner or your friend or whoever you're having an issue with. It's not that hard. I agree. Communication is impossible. Agree. No, it's not. That's why we still have a Halloween outfit chose out for us. That's true. We don't. May I suggest oh, you... uh, old man from up and balloon? Oh, I'll, <laughs> I'll be an old man. I can do that. <laughs> I love that. Wait, wait, so Joshua, what are you going to be? Are you going to complete the set or are you going to go different Disney movie? Are you going to be Prince well, me, Eric? Me and my girlfriend are planners, so we already have our Halloween costumes picked out. I'm going to be the uh, uh, Simon pre-Ice King from Adventure Time. And then my girlfriend's going to be Marceline from Adventure Time. Oh, I forgot about this. That's fucking so I've been. I've also been growing my hair out. to. It's supposed to look shitty because Simon kind of has like shitty hair. So I, I can dye it white and then... It's off for a bit. Yeah, I'm I'm committed to the bit. We could be Carl and Ellie from Up. Uh, would be very cute. I think I said her name was Earl earlier. It's Carl. <laughs> this is embarrassing. <laughs> you can cut that bit out. Cancelled. That's gonna be the promo clip for Instagram. No. <laughs> no 
No, oh man, I have to. It makes me think I haven't gotten a Halloween costume for wifey and me either. That's a real shame. Get on it. We were, we were Joker and uh, and Harley Quinn. So mm. I was Harley Quinn. She was Joker. Yeah, of course. Well, I was yeah. hoping you'd say that. And then uh, I think we switched back the next Halloween. And then I can't remember what we. Oh, we were the Incredibles. Yeah. Oh, oh that's fun. a good. That's a good yeah. outfit. Yeah, it was, um, cute. It was cute. Now you do say you you somewhat frequent TikTok. I need to share this wisdom of this piece of advice, um, oh, please to everybody and that of the listeners here. Go to YouTube, type in "If the Joker Could Beatbox." It is the worst video ever made. Very very technically sound. There's a subreddit actually called uh, um, "Awful Taste but Great Execution." I feel like this is the epitome of that phrase. The man can beatbox to save the fucking world, but it is the silliest little thing of the joker beatboxing you will ever see i don't oh, i don't think we, i need that in my life it's so good we, it's bad. which joker is it joaquin phoenix or is it i i feel like it's in it's somewhere between a leto it's somewhere between a leto and a and a ledger which is horrible <laughs> oh that sounds like a let down to me mm-hmm. leto mm-hmm. Ugh, ugh, yuck um Gross. yeah he didn't really ledger's bets very well uh, I have this oh. running bit with with Christian and my girlfriend where anytime I screenshot my phone to send them a picture, I open up YouTube to that video and then put it in the top so it's on every single picture. And it makes me laugh every time, which is really all I'm here for. It makes me mad every time. It's <laughs> I like cringe videos, but this one is like <laughs> top tier and it makes me uncomfortable. I, it, it blew up on TikTok. It had like, the YouTube video had like, 300,000 views and I first saw it, it's now like well over a million. It's just been blowing up. Another Most of those you going to screenshots. Yes, yes it's him. It's John. Yeah. I as a bit I I played it on repeat while I set up this podcast room. Over about oh, probably my. listened to it about 80 times. <laughs> you did that alone. No, so Aurora, you, you did it as a bit. Uh, Aurora was here. Oh, okay. <laughs> she wasn't happy but she was here. <laughs> <laughs> I also I was thinking I I wonder is there a bane Boxing because I feel like that would be more. Hmm. I don't know. It would fit better to me. Can you don't do a bane? Do it. Don't do it. I was Can't... born with the beatbox. Stop. <laughs> I was molded by it. You're the worst. You're so embarrassing. <laughs> I was hey, but I'm really Yes, please. Sorry. <laughs> don't encourage him. <laughs> Uh, I'm so, my impressions are sort of like the bane of Erica's existence. Oh, Jesus, so, <laughs> that and your puns and my puns, yeah. Um, bane oh. would be compi- entirely COVID um, complicit there, wearing his mask. It's true. Has his own oxygen supply. No. What are you shaking your head about? That mask does not look like it. It's an N95. It. It's it's fit on there so tight. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. It's can he even remove it? Can yes, he can, right? Mm. He can, but it he's in pain or something like that. Mm, now Batman, yeah, he's, he's, Batman's mask entirely anti-COVID. Yeah. Considering it just covers his he, eyes and nose. <laughs> the opposite he's, of a COVID mask. Yeah. <laughs> he's making fun of people that wear masks, I feel. He's, it's, he's yeah. Like, <laughs> Go Batman. figure, a rich white dude. <laughs> yeah, the billionaire. Bane's the good guy, actually. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> And the Christian Bale Batman, yeah, exactly. The Christian Bale Batman sounds like he's just making fun of everybody with his voice too. Hey, how's it going? You wearing a mask, Bane? So I don't. <laughs> yeah, that was my Batman impression. Very odd, like character choice too, right? I mean, can you just talk with a slightly deeper voice instead of like the? Oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> why would Why would he choose that? Why would he not just talk normal? <clears throat> Can't he just have a sultry voice? Can't Batman just have a nice? smooth sultry voice i think that's asking too watch. much yeah that's true what if he's like watch out joker i'm gonna get you like <laughs> yeah. oh, okay that's the batman i want <laughs> here i come to save the day that, I, I like that i actually really like that and then in his batmobile he can just run kjzz smooth beats jazz mm-hmm. all the time oh. that and that is how you get a side hustle that gives you passive income have a little job oh. on the job wow we have i think we we stitched it all together that's beautiful mm-hmm. joshua and as or you crocheted we, it all together 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> Crochet it ain't so. I feel like we have just built this. We've, we've stitched this beautiful sweater. And as I admire it, I want to also admire you guys and, and say thank you for joining this podcast, gracing me with your presence, and also just allowing my belly to have a couple laughs and uh, burn a few calories. You guys have been amazing. Thank you so much. Well, yeah. Thanks for reaching out. We really had fun. Yeah, we appreciate it. Oh, it was a great time. And I also want to ask before we go, where can people find you? What have you got to plug? Uh, what have you got going on? Well, uh, if you want to head us, head on, this is how we do all of our outros. So we're very well practiced. So if we mess up, oh. it's entirely embarrassing. Mm -hmm. If you guys want to follow us on social media, Erica, where can we do that? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok and YouTube. And I don't know, just fucking Google it. It's Judgy's Pod. <laughs> That's J U D G I E S Pod. Yeah, if uh, if you listen and you enjoy it, leave us a review on Apple. <laughs> Judge's Pod. <laughs> also, leave this show review. This was a great time. This was a good time. Glad we oh, got to do this. But yeah, if, if people, uh, if you enjoyed our Halloween talk, we, our Halloween episode, we're actually recording it this week, but we do a yearly power hour uh, where we do a shot of beer every minute for 60 minutes while reading scary stories. It was very drunk last year. I, had, I didn't make it through the power hour. Oh my God. I've never done a power hour. I've been powerless my whole to. life for all the hours. That sounds <laughs> crazy. It, how, really? dr how drunk do you get after a power well, hour? So we do, we do light beer, bush light. Uh, so it's about seven and a half okay. beers in an hour. So it's still a lot of volume. The worst part is the volume. And then about minute 23, you're like, oh man, just took the shot. And then that ding goes off and you're going again. It's, yeah, you, you really start to lose track of time to where it's like, I swear I just poured this. Why do I have to drink again? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. You're on Miller time. That's what it sounds yeah. like. <laughs> that. <laughs> and that's the episode. What a treasure. And what a treasure you guys are. Little gold coins in my treasure chest that I lock up and bury. I can't express my gratitude enough for you guys making it to the end of the episode with me i'm always happy when we get to finish together because usually i finish alone and it sucks so thank you guys and if you haven't yet please subscribe leave a review follow me follow the judges as well on all the social medias link is going to be in the show notes for all that good stuff and follow your heart don't forget that there is an organ inside of you that plays to the tune of your passions. And I want you guys to follow and sing every note, okay? Skip to the beat of life and do a sick guitar solo with your heartstrings. All right, guys, that is my advice. Thank you so much. Big old smooch right on the gooch. Ciao.